as well. Buck's very much enjoying being able to lie here and sit and watch the telly. We've got a good feature, Buck, coming up. Yeah, this is all about dog technology, and it's with you and Thomas. Technology nowadays is amazing. For example, I can get out my smartphone and at a touch of a button, I can control my heating, my lighting, my alarm system. Surely there's technology being worked on for dogs here at Crufts that makes all of our lives easier. I'm going to find out. One of the places we've found is Felcana. James, you've got to explain to me what these products do. They look almost space age. So what we've got here is a health and wellness monitor for your cat or dog. And we've got hardware devices that you place on any cat or dog's collar, and they're continually monitoring what your cat or dog is doing. So they're monitoring how much water your dog's drinking, how much time your dog's sleeping, how much activity your dog. Hang on a minute, I've got to stop you. It can monitor how much your dog is drinking. Yes. From a, from a chip on a collar. Yes. So we oh, can buy... measure how many times its tongue comes out. Or... Exactly. So we monitor the movement of your dog going down to its water bowl. Yeah. And we combine that with our beacon technology in these devices here. So we know every time your dog goes to its water bowl for how long, at what time that was. And why did you decide to bring this to the market? So I'm a vet, and while I was in practice, I realised it was quite difficult often for pet owners to, to know exactly what their dog or their cat is up to. So if your, your dog is drinking more than normal, it, it, exactly. it, there's a reason for that, a health reason perhaps? Exactly. So diseases like diabetes, kidney disease and thyroid problems are, are quite common in, in dogs and cats, and we can help to identify those through drinking patterns. And what else can it monitor? Sleep patterns? Everything. It can monitor sleep patterns. Um, we also have a light on the, on the device, so while you're walking your dog at night in the winter, you can turn on the, the light on the device just with your smartphone app, so you can see your dog running around in the undergrowth and make sure he's safe all the time. I'd love to get this system for my dog, Frank. Can you show me a demo or anything? Yeah, I'll show you a quick demo over here. This here is just showing you the activity data, so running, walking, drinking, eating. And you mentioned you can monitor how much a dog or cat would eat or drink water. So what, you have a beacon next so to you, you the You place water a beacon bowl. near your water bowl. Yep. And when, whenever the device that, that is on the dog or cat's collar goes near that beacon, it registers a visit. Okay. And then that, that visit is recorded on our smartphone app and that's communicated to you, the pet owner. This is the light. Oh, so you just flick the smartphone app and the light goes on. So if my Frank's in the garden, yep. gone out to have a little walk about, gone to do his business and I can't see him, I can touch my phone and he'll light up. He'll light up, yep. I think Channel 4 wouldn't mind putting this on me to make sure I'm going to bed at 9 o'clock every night. <laughs> 9 o'clock, no chance from you. And Noel Fitzpatrick's alongside me once again. Delighted to have you Not back. Not if he's out with me. Oh, exactly. <laughs> you lead him astray. Um, but it is interesting, the advances in technology and how we can test things out sometimes, perfect them with dogs. I was looking at a, a tracking device um, yesterday, wh which is fantastic for dogs that have a habit of going missing. Yeah, we're, we're in an era of technology. I feel in medicine we're almost at a stage when the Intel microprocessor came out for computers. And I think there's a revolution about to happen with the integration of technology and biology. So when we look at the advances that are happening in canine medicine right now, they're going to spearhead the advances for humans in the future. I mean, you and I have spoken a lot about that. But right now, when people come into my clinic and they say, please, you know, give me a solution, there's, there's a line in the sand, which is when is it morally right to provide that? And once you've discussed all the existing options, many people will say, well, that's not good enough. So we have to move forward, we have to innovate, because the frustration with the status quo is quite intense. And for me, the technology is a repeating cycle. Look at what happened for humans in the last 50 years. All of their implants and drugs came from dogs and other animals giving their lives to give us what we really want. But the tide is changing, and I think society wants that tide to change. Uh, I mean, we have a music festival for dogs and humans on the 8th of July to make medicine move forward together. It's called One Life, and, and that's about one medicine. The thing about technology is unless we embrace it under the umbrella of one medicine, dogs will always be there to serve humans. And I think it's time that the revolution of public will gives something back. Look at how much these dogs give us compassion, love, companionship, family member. It's time that technology actually gave them what they give us. Obviously, all dogs are now microchipped, if they're certainly from assured breeders, and, and it, it's a very good way of being able to register not just who the dog is and what it is, and et cetera, et cetera, but can you use that microchip to store information about conditions the, dogs, the dog might have had? Absolutely. We're looking at some, some technology right now that can monitor sleep, it can monitor your activity, 
It can monitor what you're doing and give you a computer readout of it. So I will know if you've been a very naughty lady, Mrs. Smith, you haven't done your exercises. And she'll be like, yes, I have. Here's the readout. And I think we are coming into an age where people are willing to allow technology to guide them. But the one thing that they can never replace is judgment. And I'll reiterate what I said earlier. There is no way ever that technology can replace doing the right thing for a dog. And when people come to see the super vet, they're like, OK, give me a solution, give me a solution, give me a solution. What people don't see is when I hold somebody's hand and say, we have all the technology in the world, Mary, but now is not the right time. And now is the time to hold your hand while you do the right thing. And maybe we don't employ technology. So that's, that's the, the line in the sand. I think also what, one of the important responsible things to do as a dog owner is if you do have problems with your dog is to let the breeders know because unless they know that let's say your yeah. dog has suddenly developed a load of allergies, unless they know that they can't say right we need to be really careful in using that dog or that bitch because clearly there are issues here. One of the biggest advantages of 2017 is the advent of big data. So if everything was a database and if people were a little more selfless in just in general in society and contributed to those databases for all kinds of conditions you mentioned allergies same will be true of osteoarthritis yeah. if we had a database it would allow us to make better decisions more effective decisions more ethical decisions and it would inform the breeding of all of these wonderful dogs that are here and and that is true of, of whether it's pedigree dogs or indeed crossbreeds more information is going to mean healthier dogs one would hope we're going to have more from Noel between now and the end of the program so if you've got a question for him hashtag crafts is the way to catch our eye and I'll put it to him later on.